Whether you're a beginner or you've been in this hobby for quite a while, there are things that we should have around after the basics of our fish tanks are met. And today I'm going to share with you guys those 10 things that I think that we should have on hand as backups or spares or things that are going to make our lives a lot easier as fish keepers. And I'll actually be showing you them in my hands because I actually have them available for me to use in all these different situations that may arise as we're keeping fish. Hey guys, welcome back to the Aquarium Library with Andrew. Today we're gonna to be going down I, my list of 10 things. We're actually gonna go from the least important to the most important things that you should have extras or that you should have for your fish. So the first thing that we're actually gonna start off with is this little guy. This little guy here is a, an adapter for your sink that allows you to attach a garden hose to it. It allows for a budget Python system that doesn't cost $50 to get a 50 section. And I actually have a whole video dedicated to that up there that you guys can go ahead and check out after this one is done. So the next thing that we have would be timers for our lights. And I am actually using the Casa light timers. I got a three pack from Amazon for I think $30, which is a pretty good deal. You don't have to necessarily go with the digital timer. We can go with an analog timer. A timer is going to help us make sure that our fish tanks are on for you know the set amount of time that we want and can help us combat algae as well as minimize electrical bills for ourselves if we have a lot of tanks. So consider looking at getting either a digital or analog timer to help automate the light cycles of your tank so you don't accidentally leave that light on for 24, 48 hours because you just keep on forgetting and end up with an algae bloom. So the next thing that we're going to want are some extra fish nets. Extra fish nets are handy so that we can have multiple nets to corral fish into one bigger net with a smaller net to have multiple nets holding fish if we have to package or move them around. Uh, also nets rip, so it's always nice to have extras around so that in case one does rip while you're using it, you can just go ahead, grab the next one and continue on with your doing and not have to worry about a huge hole in your net and not being able to catch any of the fish that you're trying to catch. The next item on the list would be a thermometer. This could be in the form of a digital or a analog readout. And for my digital, I actually have a pew pew gun, a little, you know, chee, that I can measure the temperature of things. And my camera is 79 degrees right now. Or you can have a analog one that you can just stick to the side of your tank and be able to read it out as you pass by. I have on my breeding tanks one of these just always and I use this to go around and check the different tanks that I have outdoors, inside, elsewhere, oven temperatures. It's just a handy thing to have around to take temperatures of randomly and it's kind of fun. So the next thing that we're going to need are some power strips and my spare power strip unfortunately is being used right now so I don't have one to show to you guys but it's only being used on non-essential stuff, not fish stuff so I can easily unplug my you know laptop charger and my computer screen monitor just plug those into the atlas but having a spare power strip is a really good thing to have around in case your other one goes kaput on you or it gets fried for some reason or you have a power surge and it becomes damaged it's good to have a backup around just to be able to replace those and it can come in handy when you might need a outlet strip for a different purpose and you can easily repurpose it for a fish tank if need be the sixth thing that we should have or consider having is a USB air pump with a battery backup system. So I actually have, oh, mine right here. Uh, obviously the, the tubing would be the same that's being used in the aquarium. And then I have a power bank that is fully charged that can run this for a good while. And I have a couple of them that would hopefully be able to get me through any type of situation. And the beauty with this type of a system is that if you were to have a power outage or things of that nature, you can charge this in a car and then be able to run this inside, or you don't have to necessarily run it, you could just walk it indoors, especially if it's icy out, you don't want to trip and fall, and plug it into your USB air pump and be able to move it around throughout tanks, be able to saturate the water with oxygen again, and then move it from one tank to the other. Obviously, if you uh, have a lot more tanks or have more money than I do, you could look at getting a generator, which would do the same thing as this, but would be, uh, what's, what's the better words? You could, you could get a generator to, uh, oh, oh, keep the refrigerator and freezer on in case the power ever to go out. But also, you know, it wouldn't hurt to have it around for my fish tanks. And maybe that would be a good justification in order to get a generator for both your food as well as your fish tanks. So the, the fifth one that I have here sort of is goes along with this, but it's an actual backup air pump that you have. So I have 
an older one that still works and is still operable that is here so that in case my air pump that I have out here or in the other room were ever to go out, I have this one as well as the USB powered one that I can also use in a pinch or buy. So having a backup air pump if you rely upon air would be a good thing. Obviously this would be sized to your system, but something that we were taught in aquaculture is that we are responsible for providing the, the waste management, the oxygen management, and the temperature management. And air in our case can be both a waste management and an oxygen management. So you can sort of see where maybe some of the next points are going to be going. The fourth thing that the fish keeper should potentially have once they've gotten all the basics covered is a extra filter and that could come in you know if your systems are run off of air that could be an air pump or it could actually be a actual filter that you have an extra of that you can hop onto a new tank if your motor dies or an impeller breaks you can just swap out the media put the media into the new filter put the new filter on it may not be perfectly sized but it will at least be able to provide some circulation and some waste management for your fish that you can go out and repair or buy a new one of the other one but it allows your fish to survive to the next day so you don't have a massive die off because you didn't have a spare filter. So the third thing that we would want to consider is especially for keeping some very hot tropical fish is going to be an extra heater. While heaters are necessary in a lot of situations, it's kind of a hot topic about whether or not you need them. If you use them and you have fish that need them you should probably have a backup and a backup that is working. And if you have to use your backup, go out and buy a new backup because it's probably going to happen at an inconvenient time that you're going to need your backup and you realize, oh crap, my backup is on one of my other tanks and this tank that I have is going to go cold in winter. So heaters, if you use them, it's a very smart idea to have one functioning heater as a backup to be able to replace or hold over or tied over a tank until you can get out and get an actual new heater. So these next two are going to be things that if you don't use or you don't have, it's not a potentiality that you'll kill your fish, it's probably an actuality that you're actually going to kill them because you don't have them. So let's get into those. The first one that we have is water conditioner. You might have gotten you know, a water conditioning kit or a packet when you first bought your system or your tanks or whatnot, but buying some sort of water conditioner that is going to neutralize you know, chlorines or chloramine or even ammonia is a very good thing to look at. And something that I would highly recommend that if you were to get anything off of this list, that you'd wanna get something like this so that you can actually be able to do water changes on a system without killing your fish because of chlorines or chloramines. So that's the number two one that I have. And the number one is also in conjunction with this would be a water testing kit. So that could be in the form of an API master test kit or in the form of dip strips. Either one will work fine. The dip strips are definitely a lot easier and are, you know, as accurate as other things. As a fish keeper, we are responsible for what is happening in our water. And if we don't know what is going on in our water and our fish start dying, that's going to be on us. So the best thing that we can have and the best thing that makes us be able to see what's happening in the water is some sort of testing kits. And it can be, again, the API test kit here or dip sticks or dip strips uh, to test the water. And out of everything here, those last two that I mentioned, the test strips and the water conditioners would be the two things that I would recommend that everyone should have regardless once they get all their fish tanks set up or their fish tank set up that you want to have these two things. The rest of the things can wait and can be built out over time, but some way to test water and some way to condition water before they go into your tank are going to be vital to the success of your fish keeping hobby. So with that, I hope you guys have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.